warm applause. Maybe start on the right side. Can we be so cozy? Yeah. 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 Can we be yeah. friends? Can we be We're close to each other? Yeah. 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 Michael, Michael. Mr. Bay, just spray a little bit of the camera, please. Perfect. Jake will tell you. Thank 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 you. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Start on the right side, please. Start on the right side. Yeah, right here, please. Just be natural. If you're not sorry, that's fine. That's fine. And honestly, spread it. Spread it. Oh, this is one of those. I want my right here, please. And honestly, spread it. One more time. Okay, one more time. Spread it. Oh. And we're right here, right here, please. Yeah. You guys are shooting so hard. Right here, right here, right here. I'm not going to hit that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great. Um, can you see the microphones are on the right uh, tables. Um, there's water as well. So, uh, Michael, Jake, Yaya, Isa, and Brad, uh, great to have you here in Berlin. Thank you for coming. Fantastic. Uh, let's talk about your movie, Ambulance. Um, Michael, I'd like to start with you. Why did you decide uh, to shoot a movie about a hijacked ambulance in LA? Well, it was written for a... Oh, um, uh, could you please take the microphone, oh, which is... Oh, thank you very much. Anyway, uh, it, before we start, uh, it's great coming on a tour. Uh, I think we've all been locked down for two years. Is it two years or three now? Yeah. So it's great coming back to uh, Berlin. Uh, we're all happy to be here, um, and uh, it's nice. <laughs> anyway, um, why L.A.? Because L.A. was a character in the movie. It was written for L.A. Um, I grew up there. Uh, I know, like, the back of my hand. I have not shot there in, I think, about eight years. Um, and it was refreshing to go back and uh, shoot. We shot literally the height of the pandemic. You know the pandemic, how it goes around the world, where it was number one cases, that was LA that the week we started, or the week before we started. Um, which made it somewhat eerie because the place was very empty. Um, and it, it actually, believe it or not, I felt made it safer because everything was so locked down, there was nowhere to go but the movie set. Um, what are the main challenges uh, in terms of shooting almost entirely in a moving vehicle? You hit your head a lot. <laughs> you bang into the dash. Jake hurt his shoulder. She hurt her head. Um, it's hard when that ambulance, it's a beast. Um, it drives, I didn't know that they're double turbocharged. They're, they're like tanks and um, very fast. Uh, we did three different pro processes. We would go live. Yaya would drive a bunch. That's Yaya driving with the helicopters right behind him, believe it or not. He thought I was crazy, but I gave him the best helicopter pilots in the world. Um, and uh, uh, that's Jake leaning out with the helicopter right behind him. Um, so they're very familiar with the moving vehicles. And then we would have a buck on stage where it was a, a, an ambulance where we could take it apart. And then we had another ambulance uh, that was on rockers. So we would kind of shoot it three different ways. 
you're most probably um, the best director for mind-blowing action films and you movies, everything is constantly in motion. The background, the foreground, the actors, the cars, props, everything. Um, how do you orchestrate this kind of action-driven choreography? I mean, you, you just, it's all about movement, foreground, background, uh, so the frame has activity. This, this, this movie, to me, wasn't about, when I told Donna Langley, who's the president of Universal, I said, listen, I've done enough action to last me a lifetime. I'm here to do a movie about tension and the, the, the um, uh, con uh, claustrophobia, kind of like Das Boat, but in an ambulance. Um, and it's just interesting to see. I want the audience to feel like if they were on a crime that was so effed up and one decision just kept spiraling everything out of control, what would it feel like from Jake's perspective, uh, Yaya's perspective, her perspective, and her perspective, how to manipulate them and how to regain control of the situation. And uh, it was an interesting dynamic and it was fun. It was amazing working with, the, with this cast. Uh, um, uh, they never could see my smile because I was always in a mask, but uh, <laughs> we laughed a lot. <laughs> Michael, did you uh, convince Brad uh, to produce the movie, or was it the other way around? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just found a script. It was sitting on the... It was si it, yeah, it, it, the, the script was... We were developing the script for six or seven years, which it feels about average, actually. It, it, people don't kind of recognize and appreciate how long it takes before a film can get on its feet. But Michael was our first choice from the very beginning. Um, we actually, I don't even know if you knew this, but we had sent you the script years prior, and I think he was in the midst of Transformers or something, and, you know, but... Oh, that franchise. Yeah, okay. there was that. That's small thing. Um, but, uh, but it came back around, and, and we were really lucky. You know, I, for me, and one of the reasons that I loved the idea of Michael um, as the director for this film was... You know, thinking back to movies like Bad Boys as well, the, the relationships, the, these characters that were larger than life, outside of the spectacle, which you know is going to be there and you know is going to be delivered in spades, um, but that swagger and that tension that he's talking about in this small space, because you are, you're, you're inside with these three people and um, all the tension that comes from that it has to work. and. You know, he's, he's done that miraculously well throughout his career. But this is one thing that people might not know this. We shot this movie in 38 days. That is an amazingly fast shoot. Um, and to get all that stuff, the, it, was the, it helped create the energy on the set because normal, normal movie would shoot about 20, 25 shots a day. We were shooting up to 120 a day. Um, so. Um, Brad, for you as a producer, what were your main challenges? We heard about the pandemic, the peak of the pandemic, and uh, the uh, few shooting days. What were you, your main challenges? It's survival, basically. <laughs> no, um, it, 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 it was, it was um, going into this at the beginning, as Michael said, at the height of the pandemic in downtown LA, with a movie called Ambulance, Right. I mean, it, it was, um, you know, we, we had an incredible group of epidemiologists that were kind of guiding us, making sure everybody was safe. Um, and, you know, all of those protocols were primary. Right. So, you know, we had to deal with that. And then we just had to deal with the regular challenges of a production, um, which is hard. Right. Making movies is hard. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's I mean, it's incredible. Look, Michael's done this so many times, he knows it like the back of his hand. Um, you know, the biggest challenges are when the sun's going down and making sure that you can get out of the location and um, get everything that we need in, you know, in camera. And just stay out of my way when the sun's setting, okay? Yeah, it's golden like, hour. Seriously. It's called golden yeah. hour. <laughs> I once parked in his shot. It, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> I, I will just say, though, that strategically what was interesting was to watch that Michael had planned and knew he was going to shoot it in such a short period of time that we were shooting in locations where there was always an option and an opportunity as we were losing the sun to go inside. A lot of the parking structure things that you shot, um, a, a, a lot of that in interior stuff was right next to the exterior stuff. Sometimes switching in and out of you know moments within the storyline, you know, jumping way forward or jumping be, be before anything we were shooting of that day. But he planned it and knew that he could be agile 
And that was really fun, because we were run, we would run. He'd go, okay, we're done, yeah, the sun's going down, go into the, da, 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 da. now we're doing this scene, grab this thing, and then you run into the scene. So something, something of the process of how... That's sort of how I sound, by the way. It, it, well, yeah. But like that, that, that was really advantageous to, to the whole process. Jack, what, what can you tell us about what, what ex kind of experience was it for you to act and to shoot in the um, cramped confines of an ambulance? Um, well, I mean, first of all, it, it, is, it was very difficult um, to act in an ambulance. Uh, but what it made me realize was it, there was, I mean, there was no physical space to do anything really. You were kind of um, forced into one spot and then you had this you know, we had this police officer in the center the whole time, so there was nothing really to jump over. You know, you had a human uh, laying down, so there's even less space. But I will say that it made me think if I found acting difficult in that space, I can't even imagine what it was like or what it is like for an EMT or a first responder who has to do an actual job um, in that space and, you know, save people's lives on a daily basis and has minutes to do it sometimes seconds while it's moving as fast as, and if not faster than we were moving. So I think the absurdity of what, you know, we were doing um, only shone light on what actually happens. And I think the thing about the movie that started to become very clear to us was that Asa's character um, was really the, the ultimate representation of what this movie's about. You know, we made a lot of jokes about an ambulance being chased and the speed at which it's chased and how not agile it is. But the things that are done in an ambulance and the lives that are saved is unmatched and incredible. Um, so the small space reminded me of that every day. Asa, hey, so you even had to uh, operate a patient uh, in the movie car. Uh, what can you tell us about this uh, breathtaking scene? It was real. I didn't do it. He's <laughs> fine now. He's missing some um, pieces of his body, but he's fine. Um, you know, it was such a pleasure to play a role like this. Rarely, um, you know, I think that especially in the times that we're living, it's sort of flip-flops in the world of like surreal stories and then um, just sort of really grounded, like day-to-day -day stories, but we don't really see stories of superheroes the way that we do like this. Like these are real life superheroes, as Jake was saying the more that I educated myself on what their lives look like on a daily basis, um, the more impressed I was with them and it just made me feel like what I do is so simple. And so it was such a gift and I'm so grateful that Michael thought of me for this role because, you know, first of all, um, it's incredible when you get to do a role like this that it could have been anyone, right? There's nothing tied necessarily and you're sort of the one being chosen. You're like, why me? And um, it was the best gift because learning with professionals on a daily basis and the good thing is that we were in the middle of the pandemic so nothing was really happening so I had a great opportunity to really prepare like daily I was like in medical school and I would call uh, I, Michael was incredibly and, and by the way Brad and everyone in production they were incredibly nice and were always connecting me to medical uh, you know, anyone that was working in it, like firefighters, surgeons, uh, and we had an EMT on set, and so the preparation was incredible, and as Jake said, the more I did it, the more I was like, wow, this is a joke compared to what they do, because I remember for a long period of time, we were obviously in the pandemic, I wanted to know more, but I couldn't go into the hospitals because it was a pandemic, and it's hard because you really don't think about the fact that you can't really research your role in a certain way because you don't have the access because of a pandemic in the world. And so I would park outside Cedar sinai and just watch the ambulance come in and out through the ER and watch them exist and see how they interacted. And it's wild. I mean, their job is so grueling. And so I, I felt so inspired and, and, you know, Cam is such a beautiful character. She's so multifaceted and, and, it's fun that you get to see a lot of vulnerability in the EMTs because they put such a guard because of the horrible things that they see on a daily basis and the way that they sacrifice their lives. So it was quite inspiring to play a woman that her strength comes from her vulnerability and it comes from uh, various different points throughout the story. And 
of course the action is incredible, but it's how they toughen up to do a surgery like that that makes it so impressive. Um, real quickly, um, the doctors that you saw on the golf course, those were trauma, those were trauma surgeons, real trauma surgeons, and they set up this entire operation. So believe it or not, it was very authentic what, what she was doing in that surgery. And they said this is how it would go down. Um, and also, everyone, all, real firefighters are in the movie. We had 50 real LAPD. Every SWAT was real. Snipers were real. Um, the undercover teams were all real. Uh, sans a few actors mixed in the crowd. So it gave it a lot more authenticity. Um, and believe it or not, these were LAPD chase tactics, um, where they put pressure on, put pressure off, because there's a whole manipulation thing when they have a hostage scenario going down. So Also incredible makeup by Donald Moet and his team. Yeah, they did such a good job. job. Yeah. Uh, is it not only uh, played a paramedic, but the best paramedic in town? Did you have any role model for that? I was so lucky to be working intimately with our uh, on-set EMT, Danny. She was incredible. And, you know, as an actor, you sort of prepare as much as you can, and you, you have an idea of what you want to bring to the character and what her traits are going to be, but really on the day and what other actors do and when you're around them, it really informs what your ultimate performance is going to be like. And I would go to her a lot, and I would talk to her and say, what would you do in a situation like this? What would a real EMT? And you know what I loved is when you get scripts like this, no dig, of course, because it's part of the writing, is like writers are not medicals. Like, you know, they're not medics. They're not, so they write these words that make you sound really smart and then she'd be like you wouldn't say that and it's like but it's gonna make me sound really smart she's like no no you wouldn't say that you would say like and she would give me all these little details and ins to the way that the emts talk to each other their humor and you really i mean at the end of the day in the time that we're living today i felt so much pressure of i, I remember when i got the the script i was just, just so scared. I was frightened to the core of playing an EMT after the biggest pandemic we've ever experienced because I didn't want to come across like a bimbo. I wanted to feel grounded and real and and really honor the first responders and I really felt a calling to do that for them as a love letter because you know we've all have experienced people right now um, suffering with this horrible pandemic and they've saved our lives. So I would drive Michael and my castmates crazy because I was just like, I wanted to be really precise and really feel like I wasn't making a Hollywood iteration of them. So for when they would watch the movie, they'd be like, that's us. That's how we act and that's how we do. And sometimes it's really um, challenging as an actor because it puts a lot of pressure on you. But I feel that the beauty of working with a cast like this and a director like Michael is that everyone else informs your performance and it gave they gave me so much to play to make her such a multifaceted woman versus just tough, you know? These people are really tough in so many different ways. One of the main characteristics of uh, a paramedic is always to, 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 to keep calm, even in uh, the most stressful situations. Is it something you have in common with calm? Um, they're gonna say no. <laughs> they're gonna say no. Because I'm kind of uh, spicy, but no. she's tough. No, she, she, I'm really she, tough. She's tough. I mean, she's a go-getter you know, on the set. Yeah, I, I think I, you know, I, I've, I've, I've gone through my process of getting better at that, but I could never do what they do. I mean, even when we were on the car chase, this, this is a, the beauty of what Michael does too. That I have so much respect, and we, I, I, I never experienced this before. I'd be curious to see what they say, but. You know, as an actor, you're sort of accustomed to, you're in situations that are crazy. I mean, even in Baby Driver, it was quite crazy, but you sort of know what you're gonna say, we're gonna hit a line or what you're gonna do. And then now think we're in a confined space. We're seven people at this point, right? Because it's us four, Michael, Roberto, who's operating as well. And it's and, and he's in, and it's this small, and there's a moment that Michael's like under my leg and I'm holding on the wall, and Jake's falling and has a gun on his hand and I don't want to smash Jackson. And so your, your heart's beating because Yaya's driving a million miles per hour in downtown LA and so now you're you're faced with a new challenge which is your natural fight or flight mode and you're nervous and your body's sending these alerts to you that you're like you're going to die and so now you have to bring a performance say words say medical words keep calm because that's what an EMT would do but also you're a hostage and so 
There's so many things coming at you once, but when you watch the movie, it gives it something different that you could never get if you weren't on that ongoing practical ambulance. And it really gives it a sense of reality that allows for nuances that are probably not even pre-planned as an actor. It allows for spontaneous moments, and I'm sure that's what he looks for. Yeah, yeah. What can you tell us about your first day on set? I heard that you had to drive the ambulance at high speed the first day. Is that right? Yeah, I had a um, had a couple first days on set. <laughs> can I talk about my couple first days on set? <laughs> All right. So my first day on set is when I go to meet I go to meet Mike, and uh, it's just a meeting. It's just to hop out of my car and you know take a walk around the block and just say, what's up? And, and uh, just to kind of see Mike in person. And uh, cut to about 20 minutes later and I'm trying on a jacket. I'm trying on like the, you know, like the, uh, the uh, EMT jacket. And uh, then I'm looking at a dummy. <laughs> I'm looking at a, at, at a dummy. I'm just like in a warehouse or something like that. And then uh, the dummy has blood and there's a couple lights. And, Roberto's there, and there's a camera, and the next thing you know, I got my hand inside of a dummy, and like, <laughs> <It wasn't planned. laughs> and we're just kind of experimenting, you know what I mean, uh, uh, with the surgery scene, and just kind of picking up, picking up little footage and things like that, uh, just testing things out. So the first, my actual first day on set, I actually went in for a meeting and ended up, you know, doing a little guerrilla style. <laughs> testing out some footage, I'll put it that way, you know what I mean? Um, and then, you know, we, uh, we fast forward to the job and, uh, and I'm in an ambulance and I'm driving with something that feels like what we call a U-Haul. I don't know what you would call it. it it's a moving truck, you know, so, I, so if, I, you know, I feel really good and I feel confident in it and they're telling me to, you know, put the pedal to the metal and, uh, and uh, I'm trying to drift it. Then I get really, really confident, and you know that's that's how you want to be. You know, this is my vehicle. I'm confident, and I have all the tools that I need to like terrorize, you know, Jake and and uh, and, and Michael and everybody else in the in the you know in the uh, ambulance. And it was fun. You know, we stayed safe, uh, but the, you know the training was was one of the more uh, most exciting parts of the job. Uh, that that's a that's a hell of a way to start a job. You know. Yeah. Yeah, Jake and Yaya. I heard that both of you had to uh, have to be tra have, to, uh, have been trained in rough style stunt driving. Um, which of you is the better and faster driver? I, I, I was not trained in any rough style stunt driving, uh, so I he was the one. Yeah, who I was. A, I was he was the one who highly had, trained. Yeah, yeah. Highly proficient. <laughs> you know, you tell me where to go. I'll get you there. I'll get you there. I don't know how I'll get you there, but I'll get you there, you know. But Jake, did you feel comfortable with uh, Yaya as a driver? Uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Driving, um, as you all know here in this country, probably better than all of us, um, is an innate skill. Um, and regardless of how Whoa. technically there. extraordinary <laughs> the car is or the vehicle is, it really does require a great driver. I am just um, more <laughs> cautious, I think. Um, and Yaya uh, was having more fun. I just... I, you, you're a good driver. You're a good driver. You're a good driver. Uh, I, I, I um, you know, but uh, I preferred his his stunt driver when we were doing dangerous stuff. That's all. You know, I doing this for a, a little while, and I, I think safety first. You know, I had a lot of laughs because I just knew, I knew while I was working, I said Jake is not comfortable right now. Like, <laughs> Jake is not acting. He is he's legitimately not comfortable. He gave me little hits. You know, it was like like some of those lines when I said, you know, do you want to drive or can I drive? Like it was it was it was real because Jake was, you know, you don't have to go so fast. I did one of the things. No, I just I one of the things I said was it's gonna look fast on camera. Don't have to go that fast. It's gonna have to go so fast. It's gonna look faster than it. And meanwhile, Mike is saying, push it, push it, push it, go, go, go. I'm the slow driver on the autobahn. You're hang, you're honking at to get out of your way. That's me. <laughs> How many um, ambulance vehicles did you wreck during uh, the shooting? Zero. Um, it was Falk, which is a I think 
think it's a European company, they gave us six, six ambulances. They cost a half a million dollars each, and um, I did not hurt one. Well, we hurt some cameras. But yes, that, but yeah, that's... No ambulances. And no ambulances. I'm sponsored by meds, so they give me free cameras. <laughs> and I guess some police cars. Yes, we wrecked a lot. Yeah, a lot of tours. <laughs> Um, so, Michael, um, I think the driving qualities were not uh, only the only uh, qualities you were looking for uh, with your fabulous cast. Um, the fabulous actors, Yaya, Jake, Asa, um, why did you choose them and uh, how was working with them? Um, well, I mean, I've always wanted to work with... Uh, uh, Jake, uh, I, I just love his acting, he commands the screen, um, he's always doing some interesting version, character, uh, it's just very compelling. Um, so I've always wanted to work, we, we, he's very, um, he's very prepared, but he's very open, and, and I love improv -ing. and I saw where he was taking his character, um, so I think I said to him the first day, I'm going to shoot you like a movie star. Um, didn't I say that? Of course you did. I, 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 I said, I said, and he goes, No, oh, you said that to everyone. <laughs> that was yeah. <laughs> right. No, 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 no. right. Okay, no. Um, but what I said is because his character had to be very charming, and he had to be very convincing, and in his desperation and his, his kind of chaos and his a little psychotic, I mean, he was just playing a very, he was, he was really fun to watch, and... And we started improv and, and I would throw things at him and he would just give me something right away. And uh, it was a fun uh, uh, experience. And we were just reminiscing about something yesterday where we had the guy through the window with a big hole in the window. Jake is taking a reel and I'm just driving in circles. And I'm in the front seat and I'm like, I got this guy right in front of me and Jake's right there. And Jake goes, what should I do? I said, just drive as fast as you can in circles. So we're getting dizzy and I'm like, okay, that punch the guy. <laughs> We were laughing and Jake just starts wailing on the guy. And I just, I laughed. I said, you look so stupid. This is so stupid. But it's great. It was great. It was great cinema. It was just like so much fun to do. That's my favorite type of filmmaking to do where it's just, it's really intimate. Um, I mean, yeah, there was like, I, that was a dummy that was in there and you just said, just yell at him and do things. And so we just started doing, I mean, and it turned into every time you would do that, you would roll the camera for a pretty long time. And I would just throw all of these absurd things at you. And by the end, you would cut, you'd say, that is so stupid. And I always knew he But I'm laughing because it. It, it was yeah. great. It was great. I mean, we, we knew that it was great. And it's just, uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, Yaya. I had no idea who Yaya was, and they said, you should look at this guy, Yaya. I said, is that a real name? And it's a true story. Um, and then I looked at his work, and uh, I had not seen Aquaman, and, and then there was a, a Netflix thing I saw of you, um, and, and I'm like, oh wow, I want to work with this guy. Um, this guy, he's going to be a movie star, and, uh, and it's just, uh, he, he's, He's really humble. He's really thoughtful. He's quiet. Look how he's just so quiet right now. Look at him. Um, uh, uh, he's he's just uh, he's just got an interesting perspective on things, and um, and the camera just loves. Uh, um, you could just the camera could just gaze at him, you know. And um, I don't know. It's just I like. We were talking again because we've been talking a lot in, in France and whatnot. Uh, but it's like the camera likes to go where it likes to go. Do you know what I'm saying? And um, uh, and then Isa, uh, when I read the script, I was uh, I, um, I literally because I remember seeing you in in some movies and but there was a little um, art film you did. What was it? Was it was it black and white? Yes. Okay. You saw, yeah, someone sent you stuff of mine, I think. Yeah, I mean, you know, like Baby Driver and whatnot, it was hard to tell her, 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 um, the chops she had. And, 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 but I saw this art film and I'm like, that's who I want in this movie. Um, and she is, uh, she, was, she really impressed me. Um, because she, she, she had to play so many different levels, and it's a very hard role to keep that adrenaline up, and 
the, the emotion of you are a hostage, you're scared out of your mind, but you've got to control the situation, you've got to try to save a life. It was a lot of layers to play. And um, uh, she had a very tough role, and I think she did. I think she's a huge surprise in the movie, and I think audiences, that's what people were saying in France, and uh, um, uh, I'd work with the three of them any day. They were, they're fantastic to work with, seriously. And I would like to talk about another actor. I think it was the screen debut for your dog, Nitro. Were you satisfied with his uh, acting abilities? Well, just getting him in the car was hard enough. He's 217 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's my dog. <laughs> that's my dog. Did you feel comfortable? In the well, it, you, you couldn't see me, but in the car chase inside that garage, it's me in the back kind of, kind of pushing him against the door, and he's looking at me like, what the hell are you making me do? You know? He's, I mean, those dogs grew up in him doing all these explosive movies. Do you think they're scared of anything? He was in that car, like, just not, didn't even bat an unfazed. eye. He's fine, unfazed. And a question to the actors. How did you experience working with the king of action, Michael Bay? Yeah, Michael was cool, man. Um, you know, I was... Uh, Michael, the way that this movie felt, making this movie felt like what, what people think about when they think about making movies, you know. Uh, oftentimes, the actor's job, you know, most people don't know, it's a lot of hurry up and wait, you know, it's a lot of sitting around. It's not always as exciting and, you know, glamorous as people um, perceive our, our jobs to be. But this job was so fun, you know, it was so fun. And, uh, you know, Mike will come in on a Monday and, like, show some some footage of some birds that he shot at the beach on us, you know, on us just over the weekend. Truly excited about it in the same way that he would be excited about getting, you know, the best shot in the scene or, you know, you know, the best shot in the movie. And so what I saw, I said, man, he really loves what he does and it was infectious, you know. Um, that's, that's, that's the way that I want to work. You know, it was really, really inspiring. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm one could say that I'm just starting off my my career, you know, um, I have some films and some jobs under my belt, but there's a long road ahead of me, you know, so, and, and, and I saw Michael, who's a pro, you know, at this, who still has that hunger um, for it, and, you know, that was something that was really inspiring to see. Um, also, you know, most people wouldn't really know, I, I don't think that, you know, Michael is also, if you don't mind me saying, like, a, you know, a sensitive cat. You know, uh, we know that we're going to get the action. You know, we know that the movie's going to look great. It's going to sound great. You know, we know that it's going to be character driven and that we'll be taken care of, in, you know, in terms of those aspects. Um, but the character, the, you know, the humanity, the heart, you know, was, was, was very important, you know, in, in, to, when, in those moments inside of the ambulance, those moments inside of the house in the beginning you know, uh, was very important to get the heart of the story right, and that's, that's, that's straight out of Mike's, you know, out, out of Michael's heart, you know, and, and, and that's something that I really, you know, appreciated as well. Um, I mean, I would just say that I think that action film as a genre, action as a genre in film, um, gets a stigma, um, and I think the, the, the word auteur is not used that much within this genre, but um, in working with Michael, um, and I think much has been said and can be witnessed by his personality, which is wonderful, and also bombastic, and also um, really directive. He is, as Yaya said, the epitome of a director. You know, he, he moves you around, he tells you where to go, but he infuses everything with this tremendous energy. And that energy is equal in him trying to capture an explosion, like what Yaya said, as it is to him trying to capture a performance. When you look at the movies that he's made over the 2,000 years that he's been working, um, <laughs> no, in, the, in, the, in the decades that he's been working, I think what you see is a quality of performer that he loves and the love of those performers. and you look back at one of my favorite movies of his, The Rock, and those are some of the best actors that have been around and are around. 
And, and you realize as an actor yourself, when you're in his space, he gives you the room. He gives you the space, he gives you that respect. He's really empathetic in that space. And I don't think any of us felt um, like there was a hierarchy in terms of, you know, his focus and attention uh, and love to us. So that when he is going, Jake, over there, move over there, what are you doing? You know, um, it's really, you see is that he's, you're trying to, he's saying, catch the wave, catch the wave, you know, and you're on your surfboard and you're just trying to get it. And then when you do, he's so excited. And so to me, I go back to the word auteur and I add action to the beginning of it. And it's not different from some of the, the, the filmmakers that people talk about performance with all the time. You know, they are about finding the truth in a moment. And he finds the truth in an explosion or in a performance and you have fun doing it. And it's, it's really great fun. So that's my experience as an actor with can I say Mike? Can I call you Michael? With Let's Michael. Call me okay, with sorry. No, I'm just <laughs> with, 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 with Michael. Yeah, I think for me, you know, I was just, I'm eternally grateful that this is the first um, sort of leading role that I've gotten. And I'm just really grateful that Michael believed in me. You know, sometimes as an actor, you're just hoping that someone looks at you and goes, I see something in that person. And it's so strange. I never thought it would be Michael Bay, you know, for me. And I think that, yeah, the other thing that I, that I think people don't talk about enough about Michael is that Michael's understood the world from the get-go and where he started his career. If you look at the actors that he gave opportunities to the beginning of their careers, he's been supporting uh, diversity his entire career from day one, from scratch. And I think that ultimately we live in an era where this conversation is consistent and now we see people stepping up to the plate and really doing that. But it's important to also, you know, shed light on people that have been doing it from the get go and that thanks to them, a lot of opportunities happen, you know, but Bad Boys is a movie that changed the game for the black community and it really showed that they were massive movie stars and he was doing it before the time and if you look at every movie he's ever done he has a reflection of the real world in his movies and i think that that's what i love about michael and he's always taking shots and opportunity and giving people opportunity to shine and, and new talent new talent and he then finds incredible incredibly talented actors in every single movie he's ever done to make us grow like i'm so grateful my entire life was to work with people like Jake and now they get to work with Yaya and like Michael being like it's gonna be you and that as an actor it's always important to say thank you to directors like that and hopefully it becomes as, as Jake was saying a, a wave and, and everyone else keeps jumping on that wave as well and and it's just been such a pleasure and he, he gave me such a beautiful role I'm so grateful it's like I think it's my favorite Michael Bay role ever so it's pretty cool she did yell at me a few times. Jake, a lot. Jake and I were in a the lot. back doing a different opposite scene. Going in, Yaya's driving fast. He's doing an emotional scene with her in the front seat. And Jake and I are laughing. And she goes, Michael, could you shut up? I'm trying to do an emotional scene, okay? We're doing well, two scenes at once. Well, because he's crazy. He just wants to shoot two scenes at once. And we're crying we'll in the front. And they're back in the, in the car going, talking about vampires. Are you a vampire? <laughs> Why is there so much blood? What do you need blood? I was like, guys, come on. Help us. It was, it was so fun, though. A few moments like that. <laughs>